Um, first off, welcome, 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 uh, especially our visitors. Welcome, and I pray God blesses each of you. I'm not going to look at those who are here for the first time and say, I really hope God blesses you um, in the sense that more than anyone else, I don't hope that. I hope that God blesses each of you. As Brother Mike prayed, um, um, he said something similar, that each of us would feel his spirit, each of us it would be confirmed that the Lord loves us through um, his message. Um, my struggle is always the same on Sundays. Is this me or is this the, is, is kind of where my, my head is at and the space I'm in is, please don't let me get in the way of God's message. Please don't let me get in the way of your message. And so I pray that there's a blessing for each of you. And if so, all honor, all glory return to him. If it isn't uh, a blessing to you, blame me. That the, It's so, so much easier than saying, why, Lord? Because some guy got in the way of his message, that's all. So just, just make sure that we keep it all on the right on the right level. Um, but welcome. Uh, I pray that God blesses you and your family, Zach, and all of you, uh, each one of you. Uh, as we went through, I, I have to tell you, I suffer with a little bit of pride. Uh, as each person introduced themselves online, I was thinking, like, there's Scotland, there's California, there's Mesa, Arizona, there's Michigan, uh, there's Pennsylvania. And I get excited thinking from Florida to Michigan to California to Scotland, all these people are in Oldham County, Kentucky. It just doesn't even make sense that, that we would have such a beautiful congregation to this little um, county in, in the state of Kentucky. But we're thrilled and honored and, and thankful for all of you. Um, as I spoke earlier about God's message, uh, it's always so funny how he confirms and um, reassures. So this morning, as I was um, praying about the the message that I felt like he had given me, um, and and struggling as I do every Sunday, um, struggling that it would be me and not and not um, that it would not be me and that it would be God is my struggle. Just so we understand. Uh, and as I was I was sitting at my um, at my table, just thinking and praying and contemplating. Candace said something about a show she's been watching. <clears throat> and um, she had said this yesterday and maybe the day before. And I thought, I'm just going to turn this clip on so I can see so that we not get it out of the way, but at least so I can validate her with her, her comments about this actress. So there's an, an actress from years past that is in a show called, um, help me, Special Forces. It's a reality-based TV show, uh, and their their um, last man standing wins, you know, and they're going through um, through drill sergeants, and and it's kind of very, very, very physical. So I don't want to lose this, and I wrote down what I heard because it confirmed this. I went to see this actress, and it confirmed the message today. It was like. I can't believe that. That's just the most ridiculous thing. So let's let's read you what I heard. So in the scene, the actress uh, says to the individual in charge um, of, of this particular drill, says this specifically, the bag is so heavy, I can't, and she's crying. I can't do it. I'm not going to act. I'm not an actor. Uh, the, the bag, I almost can't stop from acting this out, though. Um, uh, the bag is so heavy, I can't do it. My back is killing me. It should be weighted per person. I'm too small. And then she said, it's not fair. And it's like, no one cares. And the drill sergeant responded, it is fair because everyone has to carry the same thing. The drill sergeant in short form, because you're going to understand in a moment, was saying equal is fair. As parents uh, raising our three children, I think I've said this before. Um, I hope it's not defensive posturing, but I've said this before. And it's this, as we raised our three children, um, we were not focused on giving them the same things. We weren't focused on, on making certain that everyone got the exact same thing because each of the kids had different needs, different wants, different personalities. So it would be silly to think. Um, I remember when Courtney was born uh, and I was, my, my philosophy was um, all children are the same, boys, girls, all children are the same. So I got her 20 or 50 matchbox cars. She's going to have a ball with these matchbox cars. 50 matchbox cars sat in the case 
forever. For she never even opened the case and, and played with them. So when Aubrey was born, our second daughter, I passed those matchbox cars on to Aubrey. Never touched them. Ne I mean, never. Neither of the girls ever really touched them. Kylie, our, our little boy, was born third, and we had, you know, he got the, the case of matchbox cars. By the time he was three, all the paint was chipped off. He had, you know, wrecked them and had a ball with them. Each child different. And we learned then we're not going to give them equal, but we're going to always be fair. We're going to always love them equally. We're going to always do what we can to make sure they knew there was no favoritism. They, we love them all. Um, so our theme this morning, so that we're, we're sure going through is fair is not always equal. And I wrote this down because I wouldn't remember it. Fair is not always equal, but equal is often fair. Fair is not always equal, but equal is nearly always, if not always, fair. Good? It could have been called so many other things. Um, with a little twist, and you'll understand later, I almost said enough is enough. I was going to say, the sermon this morning is enough is enough. And you'll understand, I hope, later when I get to the, the text. Um but if I went to the scripture, I would have told you that the message is whatsoever is right. Make all these mental notes, please. Remember what I'm saying to you. Make these mental notes because you'll understand the references as we go. I was thinking um, so that you would understand maybe some examples um, for, our, for our message might be um, you're in a workplace and there's 20 of you in your, in your department and they tell you starting time is 830. Equal time. We all show up at 8.30. Should be fair, correct? Everyone's there at the same time. What is not factored in is some live an hour away. Some might live five minutes away. Some might be married and have other things they have to do before they get to work. Others might be single and kind of unencumbered and it's easy to get to work. Some might have children. Some might not. But it doesn't matter. 8.30 is our start time. Stay focused on our, on our theme, and you'll see all of this really plays in. Um, I was thinking about students, and, and tomorrow there'll be a test. Tomorrow at, at uh, third period, there's going to be a, an examination. Some of the kids, that's easy. Oh, I have this chapter down. I, I, this came natural. I never even opened my book. I, I understood it. Others, nothing clicked. I'm going to have to study all night. The assignment is fair. The assignment is equal. It's fair. We're having this test. Others go to, back to a home that's filled with noise and, and maybe even disruption from whomever. Doesn't matter. Others may go home to a pleasant home. Others have to work through the night. Maybe someone had, in that classroom has a job that they work till 8 or 9 o'clock at night, and then they have to scramble to study. Again, all of these factors don't play in when, when they're told we have a, a, a test tomorrow at third period. Be ready for it. The assignment is equal. The assignment is steady. Here it is. It's immovable. This is what we're doing tomorrow. So you can see that, that it's there's a lot of different factors that play in. And sometimes we fall into that mindset of, like this actress, it's not fair. It's not fair. I got to go to work. As soon as school's over, I got to go to work. As soon as school's over, I have to go to basketball practice. I have to go to cheerleading, whatever it is. It's not fair. We get caught up in, in um, this defensive posturing of it's not fair. I'm going to go to Matthew 20 if, if you want to follow with me. Fair is not always equal. Okay, equal is always fair. This isn't what I think, if not, it's among my favorite, but I think it's my favorite parable. So it's again in Matthew 20. I'm going to read you a little bit, probably talk a little bit. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, a man who owns a home and, and land, which went out, this, this owner went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. When he had agreed, when he had agreed with his laborers, we start at 8.30. When he had agreed with his laborers, we have a test tomorrow at 10.30. When he had agreed and everyone nodded their heads with his laborers uh, for a penny a day, he sent them into the vineyard. 
I'm asking you to work in my vineyard. I'm asking you to help <clears throat> harvest. I'm asking you to help reap. I'm asking you to help plant whatever his request was. And I'm going to pay you a penny for your labors. They all agree. So that we're, we're all clear. He went about the third hour and saw others standing in the marketplace. He's assessed his field, his land, and he sees, I didn't get enough people. He goes back to the marketplace, finds more laborers waiting for jobs. Now it's, they're three hours in. And he said, go ye also into the vineyard and whatever, whatsoever is right. I will give you. And they went their way. He agreed with them for a penny. Whatsoever is right is the phrase that, that is used in this. Whatever is right I'll pay you. And in this case, it's a penny. So there's people who have worked three hours more and they're getting paid a penny. There's people who are coming in late. They're getting a penny. All have agreed. It's important to understand that. All have agreed with the contracting. And again, he went out the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. Third shift, or excuse me. Yeah, third shift comes in after six hours are gone. What are they getting paid? Penny. Fourth shift comes in after nine hours have passed. So then maybe they're only going to work three hours. What are they getting paid? Whatsoever is right, a penny. About the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, why stand ye here all the day idle? And they said, because no man has hired us. And he said unto them, go also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. Anyone want to guess whatsoever is right? What that amount was? Penny. A penny. Everyone's getting paid a penny. These folks were off for 11 hours. <laughs> They're in the marketplace enjoying the day. And he brings them in at the last hour and says, I'll pay you a penny if you'll go help finish this day up. I got to get my, I got to get my harvest done. Then he said to his steward, call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. Remember that phrase, because that's a famous phrase in the word. From the last to the first. And when they came that were hired in the 11th hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. Everyone was paid exactly what they contracted. Every person was paid exactly what they agreed when they started their service. Remember a time when Candace was working um, at a company called Dean Witter. She had been with them um, for many years at this point, and she had worked herself up to be the branch manager's uh, assistant. So she had a position in this little hierarchy that was very important. And she was part of the hiring process and was hiring entry level people in at higher pay than she was receiving. She had contracted for a penny and they were coming in getting a penny and a half and they didn't have her skills, they didn't have her position and she found herself disrupted. Her peace was disrupted. And when she uh, addressed this situation to her, to her superior, his, his problem was, well, the company only allows for, I don't know what the number was, 5% increase. And we can't get you to that number because it, it can only happen once a year, 5% increase. How do you think she felt? She felt like those who were hired in the first hour. She was getting paid exactly what she contracted for. But when others came in and had a better deal, all of a sudden, her peace was disrupted. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read on. But remember, fair is not always equal. Equal is often fair. Reading on. <clears throat> remember, the last thing we said is that they were, they were struggling with their penny. And when they had received their penny... I. It, verse 11 says, received it. I'm going to clarify. When they had received their penny, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, these last have wrought but one hour, 
And you have made them equal to us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. And he answered one of them and said, friend, I do thee no wrong. Didn't we agree to work for a penny? Take what is yours and go thy way. And I will give unto this last, even as unto you. Is it not lawful? Is it not righteous? Is it not correct for me to do what I will with mine own? Is your eye evil because I am good? Do you see something wrong in what I've done when this is what we agreed to? And he goes on to say this great famous line. So the last shall be first, the first shall be last. And there are a lot of uh, ways to interpret that, that phrase. It's not just one way to interpret it. But in this application, what he's saying is everyone's the same. The last shall be first, the first shall be last, the middle shall be equal as well. We all tie for the same penny. The message today is, is a penny enough? And the penny, I hope you understand, is the promise of eternal life. My son was, was joined the church, gave his life to the Lord at age 13. I was 18 when I did. I had the honor of baptizing my mother-in-law, help me, Candace, 73, when she was 73 years old. What did she get coming in in the last hour? She got her penny. What is Kylie going to get for giving his entire life from 13 on? He's going to get a penny. For my extra five years that I'm going to claim, oh, or, or, or my less than five years with Kylie, what am I going to get? Penny. He has no argument. He contracted for his penny. He contracted for eternal life. And that's enough. And that's what this message is saying. Put the backpack on. Yes, it weighs heavy to you. You who weigh 110 pounds and, and the guy beside you who weighs 200 pounds with the same backpack, it's fair. Everyone gets the same backpack. It's fair. Everyone gets the same penny. It's fair. Our Lord is, is righteous and he offers you this glorious reward. And let's make sure we all understand something. It's undeserved to all of us. That we would even argue for the penny that I should be paid more when I don't deserve the penny in the first place, place is a little bit comical. But it's who we are. It's who we are by nature. I don't know how Disney went for my, for my daughter and, and son-in-law and grandchildren. Don't know how it went. But I assume at some point, Someone got chocolate ice cream and, and someone else asked for strawberry ice cream, but it was time for chocolate ice cream. And someone said, it's not fair. I wanted strawberry. And I would never say it in this tone, but eat your chocolate ice cream. Enjoy your, your reward. This is what we told you. After lunch, we're going to have chocolate ice cream. Eat your chocolate ice cream. Our kids at, at some point, I'm sure, got bicycles. The same? Probably not. Did someone feel uh, slighted? Probably. But our attempt was that all would enjoy whatever blessing we had from the Lord to pass it on to our kids in whatever form that came. Today, I, I want you to understand that enough, that penny, enough, is enough for us. It's a glorious reward. I don't know how it came about. I don't know this answer. I know that the, the back and forth went for a while. And I'm speaking of Brother Mike. I know that he was contemplating his status, his standing, his, probably his relationship with the Lord, with his wife, with his kids, and something connected. And he found himself giving himself to the Lord. 
Probably. I don't know. I don't remember your story. Maybe for the second time. I don't know if you had made a covenant before, but it, it could be. And maybe that was the stumbling point as well. I thought I remembered that. If I say it wrong, I apologize. But some at some juncture, the decision was made to re hit the refresh button. And I find that glorious. I haven't seen his contract, but I know his contract. For that decision, the asterisk at the bottom says, your penny will be paid when this life is over. And it's enough. There is no, there is no first hour, third hour, sixth hour, ninth hour, eleventh hour in God's eyes. I contract for a penny with everyone. And it's enough. He doesn't claim that <clears throat> at the end of the day, everyone will have done an equal amount of effort. He doesn't claim that. He doesn't claim that if, if those who gave more effort will get more than a penny. He doesn't claim that. He says, I contracted with each one of you for a penny. And what we say down here on the ground is, we don't even, we don't even deserve the penny. So how could we possibly think I deserve more? Fair is not always equal. It doesn't always translate to equal. But equal, it's always fair. The penny was offered equally to each one of us. It's fair. Not because I gave more or I gave less. It's because that's what I agreed to receive. As harsh as it was for Candace as a young woman to hire those new people in, that was their contract. It's what they agreed to. What she was getting paid lesser than for doing more work, it was her. It's what she contracted for. Did it feel um, fair? No. But was it? Absolutely. And so the message today is, our God is good. Our God is righteous. Our God provides uh, a reward that is hard to even understand. I've shared this experience before. I'm going to share it again because it speaks to those in the know versus the rest of us who are only wondering. And I love all the um, individuals involved, which make this experience even more powerful. Uh, one of my um, mentors, or maybe two of my mentors, but one of my mentors was Brother Dennis Morocco, who was um, just the most wonderful um, teacher I've, I've ever had in, in my spiritual walk. Um, and Brother Dennis lost his wife. Um, stunningly, shockingly, um, without um, preparation, without uh, without any warning. Um, and he had two little boys in his home. And so his father, living in Michigan at the time, um, with his wife, carved out two or three years of his life and left his home in Michigan and moved to, to Florida to take care of Brother Dennis and his boys and help raise these boys while Brother Dennis went off to work and continued in his, in his job. And um, <clears throat> it was made known to us that, that Brother Dominic Morocco is who the father was, that Brother Dominic um, became sick and that sickness ultimately took him. And I told you the story for a purpose, I told you the story to understand that what he was doing was noble and needful for Brother Dennis. And he was taken in the middle of this. Uh, he, he returned um, back to Michigan to be with his wife before passing, and she needed taken care of. Sister Connie was without a husband for a year or two. Um, and, and so she needed someone there. When he got back home, he also had his daughter and his, his other son back home as well. And they needed their father. And that's when he was taken. And um, his son, his other son, not Brother Dennis, but his other son, 
um, Larry was uh, very, very, very frustrated by the situation. And, and um, I think he felt uh, anger, and if so, uh, understandably, and hurt and, and um, alone with this condition. And uh, it seems he was questioning God. And I say all of this to say, and Larry at that point, and, and maybe even since, I don't, I have not followed up with Larry. At that point, he had not made any covenant with the Lord, but had a relationship, clearly had a relationship with the Lord and was questioning why, 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 why would this happen? Why would you take my father when you took him, when all of us needed him? And especially my brother who has these two boys. One night, Larry had a dream. And in the dream, um, he said he was he was looking across, it seems like a building, maybe the bottom of a building, and there was a, an elevator across the way. And he saw, as you all have experience with elevators, saw the lights going down as the elevator, and he knew it was coming down. And the doors opened when the elevator got to the bottom, and his father stepped off the elevator. Larry's words, not mine, or some facsimile of what I'm saying were Larry's words. He said his father was dressed in perfection to the nines. Tie on, coat on, dressed, just hair all down. I say all of that because you guys, some of you don't know Brother Dominic, but he was never dressed this way. Um, coat was always a little bit off to the side. The tie was a little to the side. His hair was always kind of sticking up. He was always in a swirl. Brother Dominic was always working. He was uh, an evangelist in our church, um, and which means his calling was to tell others of the Lord. And that's who he was. He was always telling others and hair was, a, a, everything was askew with Brother Dominic. And he was just loving on people all around him. So when he got off this elevator and everything was all right, that's the first thing Larry saw. He just, that's not who my father is. He's, perf he's perfect. And when he got off the elevator, Larry addressed him and said, dad, we need you. We need you. Dennis needs you. And he went through this whole case that I just made for you. He made that case to Brother Dominic. Remember how I prefaced this saying, the difference is what we think is awaiting us. And those who have been there know what's awaiting us. Brother Dominic had, had knowledge. The rest of us only wonder. So Brother Dominic, um, as, as Larry made this case, come back. We need you here. We need you there. Dennis needs you. The boys need you. We all need you here. Brother Dominic said simply this, Larry, even if I could, I wouldn't return. It's so beautiful here. And he turned around and got back on the elevator. The lights as he went up. Does that mean that Brother Dominic was discounting or disregarding what was happening on earth? Not at all. He had a different understanding having seen the beauty of the penny. He had received his penny and understood what that penny meant, what that penny represented, what the cash equivalent for that penny actually was in eternal life. And he also knew while things are tough here, it'll be fine. He knew that Dennis was fine. He knew that Connie was fine. He knew that his children were fine. God will take care. Be that as it may, even if I could, he said, I wouldn't return. I've seen the glory of God. I know what the penny represents. So I make this case today to tell you, don't worry about whether someone else is working less. Don't worry about someone else is making their commitment at 73 instead of 13. The, the real loss is not to the person who gives themselves to the Lord at 13. The real loss is the person who gives himself at 73 in the sense that they don't get the blessings that Brother Mike prayed for today. Lord, bless us in this service. The difference between 13 and 73 is 60 years of lost experiences, of the joy of knowing, of the joy of awaiting that penny that's coming. So don't worry if someone comes in the 11th hour. Don't worry if someone else comes in the 9th hour and you were here in the first hour. You're going to get your penny. And glory in this, they're going to get their penny too. 
there are no favorites for me. Baptisms, weddings, I, I've done two weddings in the last two weeks. No favorites. Thought of you guys as, as I was marrying these couples. I thought of you too. When Candace said I got a, a text from Lisa that we're going to see him tomorrow, I thought, yes, yes. Two of my, sorry, please don't be offended. Two of my babies that I was part of in the wedding. I, I, I think of that all the time. The joys of, of what present us in this life, in this time, are, are too great to list. So why would I ever complain? Why should any of us ever complain? The backpack is a struggle. Ah, but it's just perfect for me. The heat of the day is a struggle for those who start in the first hour, but it's glorious. Think of the great sun tan you get. Find the positive in it. You know, what we miss is maybe people were working out in that field. Those who are here at 13 and giving themselves early are, are getting more opportunity to tell others of Jesus Christ and bringing them to the penny. Brother Mike's on fire right now. He wants everyone to experience what he experienced. I remember my first baptism. I don't remember my own this way at all. Because I was young and, and didn't really understand the fullness of what was happening. But I remember taking Brian Miller into the, into the Atlantic Ocean in Hollywood, Florida. And I remember after baptizing him thinking, this is what everything is about. There's nothing that compares to seeing someone give their life to the Lord knowing they're safe now. They fall under the promise of the penny. I'm not looking for equality. I'm not looking for fairness. I'm just praying that each of you make the decision to find your penny, find your promise with the Lord, sign that contract and await that payment. That's what life is about. May the Lord bless each one of you in your quest to understand and then fulfill what this life is truly about. And it's about finding Jesus Christ and finding eternal life. May the Lord bless each one of you.